Well, this is amazing, isn't it? This is amazing. When Glasgow City Council made their decision, they weren't expecting this. Okay? What they were expecting was nothing. Maybe an email here and there. You know, maybe maybe someone might have a quiet word with them here and there. They were not expecting this. And when they see the pictures, they're gonna think, oh, what have we done here? Then maybe we need to just think again about what we're doing with this. Will they change their mind? It's a long shot. I don't think they'll change their mind, but what they will do is they'll think, wow, the next time, let's just stop and think about this. And the other thing is, people in Scotland are gonna see pictures of you and they're going to see that that's some leadership, that some people are standing up to this and they'll think that's what we're going to do too. So when the same thing's happening to their church, to their event, they'll think, right, we don't just roll over and accept this. This is something we have to stand up against. Yeah. And that's what we're starting here today. Brilliant to see so many of you. And this weather is fantastic. You've, you've done a good thing by being here. Okay, you've made your voice heard and it's going to make a difference. Two reasons why we're in this spot. One, Glasgow Council. Number two, the War Memorial. Okay, what was that all about? What were they fighting for? Freedom. Were they fighting so you can live under a regime where you're not allowed to say what you think? Where people live in fear of the authorities? No. They were fighting for freedom. So you live in a regime where you can say what you think, you can exchange your ideas, you can try and persuade people. If you disagree with something, you can say so. That's one of the most basic things, isn't it, about a civilized society. And that's what's been attacked. Remember, when I was young, it was quite common uh, when people prayed, they'd say, thank you for our freedom to worship and to preach. And they'd say, let's remember people in countries that don't have that freedom. And when I was a kid, People would pray that, and it didn't enter their head that we would ever be in a country ourselves where we'd be facing these issues. It just didn't enter anyone's thinking. Whereas now, it's well underway. It's the direction we're heading in. I think on this issue, time's running out. The way things are heading, I think, give it five or ten years, we won't be able to be here. I mean, I'm the Scottish Family Party, we won't be able to operate. Churches with controversial views will find terrible restrictions imposed on them. I think if we don't tackle this now, and say current way things are going, five or ten years time, it's over, it's too late. Okay, our children will be saying to us, how did this happen? What did you do about it? And well, we're going to be able to give them an answer to it. Well, what's prompted this? Obviously, the big issue is Franklin Graham coming along to Scotland. Franklin Graham a figure really from the mainstream of Christianity and yet booked venue in Glasgow and the city council, SMP led city council, got in banned. Another issue you might not have heard about this one, Destiny Church in Edinburgh, or no, Destiny Church in Scotland, they booked the Usher Hall for a conference um, at the end of June. I went to this conference last year, that really brings it home to me. I went to a Christian event a couple of years ago. And the next time, the same event scheduled, but Edinburgh City Council has blocked it. Has said, we're not having these Christians using our facilities. So that's why we're here. That's what's brought this issue to the forefront. But what's behind it? What's the issue? What's the objection? Well, we all know. Let's call a spade a spade. What happens is LGBT activists try and block things. Anyone they disagree with, they ferociously attack them. And they kick up a fuss. And the politicians, the councils, the businesses are generally just scared of them. They just think anything for an easy life. A lot of them don't really agree. They just think, we'll go for the easy option. Let's just cancel it. The LGBT people, I mean, they'll be knocking our door down. They'll be making a huge fuss, coming us all sorts. So we don't want that. Whereas the Christians, well, you know, there might be an email or two. So what? There's not going to be any problem there. So let's just side with them all the time. These recent events, it's not the first time it's happened. Remember Angus Buchan, yes, when he was yeah. coming to speak in the borders? His venues were cancelled cancelled by the council there. And again, I've got I've, I've seen letters from MSPs supporting that ban, saying, yeah, this is quite right. We can't have these sort of people speaking in Scotland. They don't have Scotland's values, as if someone else has got the right to define 
what Scotland values or all like that, it's like exclude Christians from it. I mean, my personal experience, did you hear the story yesterday in the news about this bloke, this old ex-policeman who'd been harassed by the police for criticising sort of transgender ideology? Did you see that story? Yeah. But I, I've got a better story than that, personally, uh, where the police have hounded me because I've said I think children need a mum and a dad, ideally. Yep. So the police said that's a hate incident. They reported it to social work. The social work department has a hate concern. Because I said I think kids need their mum and a dad ideally. The social work department in Edinburgh sent this hate concern form to the school where I was working. So they sent it to my employer saying that I was a hate concern for just saying a perfectly reasonable, normal thing like that. I mean it really is out of hand, as I say, the time we've got to fight against this is quite limited, I think. The Scottish Parliament already are on the way towards introducing hate speech legislation. So it's bad enough now. Once that comes in, it's going to get worse. Hey, who wants to speak hatefully? No one. Who thinks that when you say things that are actually not hateful, people say it is hateful? That happens all the time, doesn't it? So that's going to be a major problem, and that's heading into Parliament at the moment. So churches, what can you expect of the way we're heading? Um, charitable status. Forget it, the way we're heading. There's a church in Scotland applied for planning permission to build a building and some LGBT activists are trying to block it. So they've got this campaign going and they're saying we don't want a church with these values in our community. So they're opposing the planning application. Now that is outrageous, isn't it? Yeah. The council should be saying, get stuck, don't be so ridiculous. Of course a church can build a building in our, in our town. Do you trust the council to take that line? No. If it was Glasgow Council, do you think they would? No. I think they would say, oh well, maybe that's a good point. Maybe we don't want these sort of people building buildings in Scotland. That's the way uh, it's heading. Um, you know, what's going to be happening? You're going to get people coming to the church, they'll record the sermon, they'll look at the, the minister's blog or whatever, and if they can find anything that doesn't quite fit, They'll be reported to the authorities. And what's going to happen? Before too long, it will simply be illegal to preach elements of this mainstream Christian faith. Yep. We're more or less there already. Yep. But that's just going to become the blanket, uniform position. And they think they're going to bully Christians into submission. It's not just Christians, it's Muslims as well, it's lots of other people. They think they're going to be bullied into submission. They haven't looked at the history of the Christian church. Persecuting the Christian church doesn't have a great record of success, does yeah. it? <laughs> okay, there's not, there's not a huge history of Christians saying, oh, okay, fair enough, we'll change what we believe then. We'll cut these pages no. out of the Bible. Same with other faiths, same with Muslims as well. There's lots of people with no faith at all, as well, who take the same position, they will not be bullied, and they will speak out what they believe to be the truth. Now, we are here. Now, how many politicians in Scotland have spoken out on this issue? and said, right, this is not on. There should be freedom of religion. As far as I'm aware, the figure is zero. zero. Absolutely zero. Some of those politicians actually hold the same controversial views that Franklin Graham holds. They believe the same things. But what do they think? They think, oh, well, there must be something. Franklin Graham must be not quite as wise as us. So we've been, we've been a bit nicer than him. So, okay, he's getting it in the neck at the moment, but we're not, so that's okay. We must be the nicer Christian. Then what happens? Then it's the next lot, the next lot, the next lot. Eventually, it will come for them. It will be their turn. And when it's their turn, we will be standing up for them, won't we? Okay, we will start for them, even though at the moment, they won't speak out for us. It's the sort of thing with freedom of speech. It's one group, then another group, then another group, then another group. If we don't fight it, for other people, who will be there to fight it for us when we are in the firing line? But we're here today showing our solidarity uh, with them. So the council, I mean we're here, the councillors don't know we're here, but the councillors are going to see photographs of this. People all over Scotland are going to see photographs <laughs> of this group of people. And what are they going to, th what are the councillors going to think? They're going to think, hang on, this is becoming an issue that actually matters politically. Polit because the thing we have to remember, this is really crucial, 
we live in a democracy. Okay? So these councillors that are discriminating against Christians in this case, or the other religions, or the other people on other occasions, these councillors discriminating, how did they get there? Because people voted for them. Okay? So when it comes to time to vote, that's the time they really worry about what people think. They don't really care about petitions and letters and this sort of thing. What they care is election day. Now these councillors, they've made their decision, they think, oh, it doesn't really matter. When they start seeing people are saying, well, hang on, this is the SNP council in Glasgow. This is SNP council in Edinburgh. Now, the SNP leadership nationally haven't said, oh, no, we think that's wrong. They haven't told, overruled them. So these are SNP decisions. Now, if Labour were in control, would it be any different? Frankly, no, they do the same. If the Conservatives were in charge of these councils, would it be different? No. No. I think it would be exactly the same. So it's not that we're particularly saying, you know, we're against the SNP, because I think the other parties would be just as bad. We're against whoever happens to be in power making these wrong decisions. But in a democracy, the way you get through to politicians is on election day. It's on election day. That's when we've really got to make it make a difference. So they'll see this picture, they'll make it think, hang on, people are thinking this is about the SNP. These are SNP decisions, and that will give them pause for thought, and we'll be able to make a difference. And the one other thing we're going to do is, there's a chap in Birmingham at the moment called Jafar Hussein, who's getting into legal hot water. He's basically said, I'm not sending my son to school to be taught various gender ideology nonsense. And it's at the point that he's facing legal action. So all, what we'll also do, uh, if you want to, it's entirely up to you. If you want to be in a picture with him, I've got a placard saying, we support Jafar Hussein. So if you want to just be in that picture as well, we'll take a quick snap, then we'll pass that on to him. He'll be able to share that in Birmingham and that will, will show solidarity with the people there. But brilliant that you've been here. Brilliant that you've been here. Um, the future belongs to, belongs to people who show up. You heard that phrase? Yeah. And it does. There's lots of people on the other side, if you like, who will turn up again and again and again. They're like professional demonstrators. They're always on coming to this sort of thing. But it's great that you've been here. This will make a real difference. Are you pleased to see that event happening? Are you glad that someone's taken a stand like that? Our fundamental freedoms are under attack. It's a political issue. And we, the Scottish Family Party, are fighting back in the political arena. Running a party and campaigning politically costs money. We've got no wealthy backers. We've got no large donors. We rely on membership support from people like you. The minimum is just £4 a month. And if you want to support us, join us. There's a link below. Thanks for watching.